Thank you very much. That was a great and inspiring speech. And uh, after I've gotten to know uh, Andy uh, for the last several days, I expect nothing less. So thank you very much for uh, doing that. So Professor Hamilton, uh, I know there are many principals of uh, schools here. So welcome, distinguished uh, guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I want to begin by first uh, thanking uh, Oxford University Press, uh, everybody here, uh, for organizing this forum and for giving me and HKUST the honor to share the platform with Professor Hamilton. First of all, let me just begin by saying uh, I agree with uh, everything that uh, Professor Hamilton has said. Uh, people, research, education, and finance, and especially the last one. <laughs> Uh, I'm looking in this way because we have someone over here who actually is chairing the committee to search for our fundraising uh, vice president. <laughs> okay, so uh, Max, <laughs> I hope you get inspired. Uh, uh, but you'll hear from me sort of my own view of this and also the way we do it at HKUST, so in a slightly different way. So uh, Professor Hamilton and I just came back, as you might have heard, from the fourth Chinese Foreign University President's Forum in Nanjing. Uh, we actually discover in Nanjing just how much we have in common. Uh, you heard a little bit from, from Julie. Uh, you know, although we were born in two separate countries on two separate continents, we are both scientists. Uh, he's a chemist, I'm a mathematician. Both educated during our young years in our home country, went to the US for higher education, or, high, or uh, I would say uh, North America in, in your case. Uh, stumbled into academic administration, certainly in my case, okay? And even joined Yale University as fellow faculty members. Uh -huh. Last fall, Professor Hamilton returned to his native England to head up Oxford, and I came back to Hong Kong to take up my HKUST challenge. In the future, some of you, students and, uh, and so on, uh, will follow our footsteps by going abroad and returning to serve. But some of the flow maybe in reverse, people coming east to Asia, to China, in addition to the U.S. and North America. Truly, our commonality is the essence of the global nature, or what I call the academic ecosystem, which you also refer to, part of the actually bigger human capital movement across the globe. To continue this comparison, Professor Hamilton and I are even about the same age. I checked this on the wiki page. <laughs> I leave it to you to guess who is the older one. I, I will add, you can see we even have the same amount of hair. <laughs> ah, there you go. I was going to save that joke. I had a haircut about three weeks ago. <laughs> okay. But of course, the big difference between us is the age of our universities. Oxford, as you've heard, is nearly 900 or over 900 years old, while HKUST is only 19 years old. That makes us a baby compared to grandfather Oxford. Over its many centuries, I understand that Oxford, in addition to producing Nobel Prizes and you know, Prime Minister, has also produced 12 saints. <laughs> we, of course, cannot compete in that department, but we hope to produce the same kinds of global talent that Oxford has produced down to centuries. Well, okay, there's actually another small difference between us. On paper, between our two institutions, on papers, our rankings are actually not that far off from Oxford. You know, Oxford is always ranked in the global top five or top three, or whatever, depending on how you count. We, HKUST, are merely at world number 35. But now if I ask the parents and principals here to form a line for getting your kids into Oxford, that line will stretch to Prince Edward Road, <laughs> while the line for HAUST may not even go past this podium. But I say to you, Andy, watch out, Oxford. We have another 900 years to catch up to you. <laughs> Let me say that HAUST is not exactly Oxford's poor eastern cousin, for reasons that may not be that obvious to most of us. Young as we are, we do have a few things to show for our first 19 years, as you have heard a little bit. 
you have heard about our EMBA program, and we have been ranked number one in the world uh, twice during the last uh, three years. I always compare that to, you know, it's like Hong Kong won the World Cup football. <laughs> in fact, it's even harder to do, because there are certainly more World Cup NBA or EMBA teams than World Cup football teams. So if you think, and every institution like Oxford and Stanford and Harvard and so on want to win that race. So uh, since I can only, I can take credit for everything that happened before I came, this is one of those instances, okay? And, uh, and of course our MBA program has been ranked this year, uh, this current year, in the top 10 in the world. Now, of course, we are University of Science and Technology, so I want to remind you that our engineering school is ranked number one in Asia, and our science school is at least number one in Hong Kong. So we are not just a business school, okay? <laughs> anyway, if this sounds like a sales pitch to you, well, it is. When you stand next to Oxford, what else can you do? I don't know if it's appropriate to compare the upstart HK UST with venerable Oxford. Are we comparing apples with oranges? I don't think so. If you leave the age and the tradition aside, there is an underlying fundamental common core between us. Oxford is famous for its tutorial system, you have heard. By the way, I remind people, this is not the same as the multi-millionaire tutors in Hong Kong. <laughs> you, you may not be familiar with this phenomenon. From Professor Hamilton, I understand what right, you have heard, that this is a very expensive system to maintain, and it often involves cutting back on other needs of the university. That's why one of the reasons, you know, Professor Hamilton is here, right, to deal with the four factors of finance. I want to tell you a little bit about our version of this, uh, this problem and how we address this. HKUST, we have been created to be a research university from the beginning. We therefore have a very strong research culture on campus. In fact, we have started an undergraduate research opportunities program in which more than 90 professors take part mentoring more than 200 undergraduates in research. Students have a one-on-one -on -one opportunity to discuss research and problem-solving questions in depth with their mentors. This is an intensity that rivals Oxford's tutorial system. It's different, but I think it's a, the starting point is the same. As you know, in most universities, students don't get to take part in research projects until they are well into their postgraduate studies. The results of these programs are astounding. This year, it was covered in the newspaper, more than 30 of our bachelor degree graduates armed with their research records and publications, have been accepted directly into PhD programs by leading universities, such as Yale, Princeton, Stanford, and so on. Probably some to Oxford, I don't know. Most of them with full scholarship. Now, some people wonder how we are able to achieve so much within so short a time. I have my way of explaining this, and I have to introduce some Cantonese, okay? It is summed up in, in the following way. Tinsi Dele Yang. In, in English, it's timing, location, and people. So the people part is similar. So in timing, our founding fathers saw the need for science and technology education and research in Hong Kong as our manufacturing base moved north to China about two decades ago. In location, we are right next to the recent Asian economic boom and a fast-rising China. In people, we set very high standards in attracting the best faculty from around the world, high exclusively on merit, and they in turn have attracted excellent students, both locally and globally. So this is very much aligned with what Professor Hamilton has mentioned. 